Greetings, Dave Berger here from Sharon Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you from God, the Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hopefully you've been noticing and appreciating the daily content that's been coming out from Sharon Lutheran Church. We certainly appreciate hearing back from you what's the most meaningful, what's helping you get through each day as we wander and wonder together through these days of uncertainty. Today's Community Connection from me will pick up where we left off last week. So if you didn't see that video from last Thursday, you may want to pause this and check out that video as well. I'll have a link in the comments below. If you remember, we're working our way through the five senses, not those senses, sight, smell, sound, and so on, but the five senses that make us who we are Sometimes we're unaware of them until they're taken away or something shifts or changes. Uh, so last week we were talking about the sense of safety and during this time how much that may uh, feel like it's, uh, it's shaken for us. Also talked a bit about what we might do to reclaim that sense of safety. In weeks to come, we'll be talking about our sense of story, our sense of purpose, our sense of hope. Today, I want to unpack with you the idea of community. Now, community is one of my favorite words. I love my faith community. I love the community of Grand Forks. It's my hometown. To be in community is to belong, to be different together, to agree that certain things matter so much that we can set aside our differences, hopefully even celebrate our differences and come to an understanding that we are better together. Except right now, it may feel like we have lost that sense of community. We are isolated. We're unable to come and go as we please. Many of the events we enjoy, the places we find community have been canceled or shut down or taken away from us. Even those among us who naturally keep to their, themselves a bit more, may lament the lack of options and freedoms during this time. And we all certainly have people we miss terribly. At the heart of it all, I think that we don't like being told that we can't be together. Here's what we can do. Check in with our loved ones. Participate in or even host online events or gatherings. Rediscover the community which exists in our own family units. Check in with each other and be real. Share highs and lows, fears and failures. Uh, in our house, we have left the items in our calendar that would have been taking place so that we can grieve them as, as they happen rather than take them all off of the board all at once. And we talk about what might have been or what could have been and why that matters so much, as well as making plans and wishes and dreams and hopes for when all of these uh, burdens and restrictions are lifted. We also can set a routine and stick to it rather than uh, finding our way through the wilderness of everything being new and perhaps more time than things to do, um, I think it's still helpful to have a routine, to get up, to get ready, uh, to make a to-do list, uh, to find some ways to, to continue holding on to some things that, um, that make life meaningful for us. We also could join a virtual group or learn a new skill. Maybe some of you can teach a new skill and create a community that way. In a sense, all of these mitigation measures are a way for the world to come together even as we stay apart. It's the recognition that all of our lives are connected in such a profound way that we all need to do our part and stay apart. I'll leave you with this thought, which we'll explore in greater detail in a couple of weeks when we unpack purpose. But for right now, Here's the reality. God isn't calling us to go to church. God is calling us to be the church. 
I look forward to continuing these community connections in the days and weeks ahead. In the meantime, be well, friends. Peace.